Hello and welcome to Tech Deals 64 Benchmarks 1080p, 1440p, and 4K between the i5 9400F and the Ryzen 5 2600X using the GTX 1660Ti Battle of the $900 Gaming PCs. I have a ton of charts later in this video with more numbers than you can shake a stick at. But before we get to that, I briefly want to recap what these computers are, how I tested them, and a few thoughts on the upcoming benchmark charts. Today's video is brought to you by ActionFigureSale.com. This is a site that sells a variety of action figures, Marvel, DC, Transformers, and more, free shipping worldwide. Many different options from NMI figures to, as I said, Marvel, DC, and even some Star Wars. But today we're going to take a look at Megatron. Please note, special exclusive discount code just for Tech Deals viewers, 20% off. Let me show you how that works. These are large and detailed figures. These are not small toys. This one is 30 centimeters or 12 inches tall. This is a foot tall. Coming to the shopping cart, type in TD20 and apply, and you'll get your 20% exclusive discount code, bringing it down to $48. In addition to action figures, they also have a variety of skins. You can see a humongous collection here for PlayStation, Xbox, etc. Clicking on the Overwatch for PS4, there are multiple design options. So within each one of those skins, there are anywhere between a half a dozen to sometimes two dozen different skins that you can pick. ActionFigureSale.com, check it out using the link in the video description below. First of all, linked down in the video description below will be the two playlists for each of these computers. Those playlists contain the review of this pre-built, the build of this custom build, and links to a ton of detailed individual game benchmark videos. Those show you footage of the benchmarks that I'm about to show you. There's no footage of benchmarks in this. Instead, I did individual videos of the live gameplay and then one more bonus video over on the Tech Deals gaming channel that contains the recorded footage of all the built-in benchmarks in one video if you want to see what it looks like besides just chart. These two computers both represent excellent values for the money in terms of overall performance, ability to run programs, multiple programs, and any game available on the market today. What resolution and what detail setting you can run, of course, depends upon the game. But before you actually show you the charts, I just want to make something perfectly clear. All the games tested ran fine on both machines. Some ran faster on the Intel, some ran faster on the Ryzen. It depends upon what game you want to play. But if you're okay with making compromises on resolution or detail, you can play everything on the market right now on these two computers. What I'm not going to do in this video is rehash the pre-built versus custom build. I have a very long 30 minute video where I go into excruciating detail about the pros and cons of pre-built versus custom build and what's in the computers and why I would choose which over which. I'm not gonna do that here. Instead, I'm only gonna make one point about the graphics cards. This has been brought up in the previous benchmark videos and I wanna address it here. The i5-9400F does have a slower version of the 1660 Ti than the Ryzen 5 2600X does, by 7% in terms of clock speed. It generally runs about 1800 megahertz, maybe 1830, versus the 1950 megahertz of the Gaming X and the Ryzen 5. It's about a 7% clock speed difference. In the real world, what this means is if you were to overclock the video card on the i5, instead of 80 frames per second, you'd get 84. Can I get a show of hands of everybody in the audience? How many of you think that if you turn the benchmark numbers off and just play your game, you can tell with the naked eye the difference between an average frame rate of 80 and an average frame rate of 84? Anyone? Yes, you two chuckleheads in the back can sit down. No, you can't. The reality is that is a rounding error. You can run many of the benchmarks multiple times and they will vary by two to three frames per second from run to run to run. Some are more accurate than others, some are less accurate than others. But of course it also depends on what you're doing on the live gameplay, play a different map, play a different area of the game, point the camera a different direction for a few seconds and you'll alter the numbers. I made my best effort to make these as comparable as possible in terms of where I was playing and what I was doing in each of the games but it's sort of an art and sort of a science, so it's not perfect. 
Yes, the gaming X in this is faster. Yes, the clock speed is faster. However, think about this for a minute. If you really wanted a noticeable performance jump, you'd have to spend a lot more money on a video card. Even going to an RTX 2060 is not gonna be a major noticeable difference. You'd have to go to a 2070 or 2080 before you actually went, wow, that's a lot faster. So the minor differences between cards really makes less of a difference than you think. One final thought before we actually get to the charts, linked in the video description below will also be links to Amazon and Newegg, both for this computer and for all the parts to build a Ryzen 5 system. This video took a lot of work to make. The individual videos took a lot to work to make. And most of the stuff you see here, I had to buy. I don't get sent a lot of things. CyberPower has never sent me a PC. It's not sponsored in any way. So the YouTube ads definitely help, but the affiliate links in the video description below also helps a lot, regardless of what you end up buying. Maybe you do a, a Ryzen 3 or a Ryzen 7 instead. Maybe you buy an iBuyPower instead of a CyberPower. There's several uh, good ones of those over at Amazon. Using those links in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, and I would be really appreciative. On with the benchmarks. Game Group 1 consists of 1080p high detail built-in benchmarks. We have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn, Final Fantasy 15, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and The Division 2. Rather than reading out each of these numbers, I think the screen is pretty self-explanatory. All of these are within a couple of frames per second in terms of average frame rate between the Intel and the Ryzen PC. Moving on to the minimum frame rate, you can see the same story. There's a few differences a little bit larger. The Division 2 has a bit more Far Cry 5, etc. But overall, still very competitive performance. How about maximum frame rates? Well, these are less important than the others. Final Fantasy 15 wasn't reported because I was using the Afterburner benchmark, which reports 1% and 0.1% lows, and I didn't record the max, so it's not there. But it doesn't matter. It's plenty. These computers run these games great. Moving on to Game Group 2, 1440p high detail built-in benchmarks. For Honor, Rainbow Six Siege, Strange Brigade, The Division, and World of Tanks. That's the Encore, the standalone benchmark for the game. Rainbow Six Siege had a nice high-end performance of 155 and 158 per frames per second, respectively. The rest of them were in the 70s to 90 frame rate range. Excellent performance for 1440p. The minimums are equally respectable. Take a look at those Rainbow Six Siege minimums, 125 frames per second. That's just crazy. If you have a 1440p 144 hertz monitor and you want to play esports, you can actually do it on these computers. It isn't always going to hold 144 frames per second, but it will do a pretty darn good job, at least in that type of game. As for the rest of them, Strange Brigade, The Division, etc., notice it's still very respectable. Drops off in a few of them, but very playable. Finally, the max frame rates for those of you who want to see them. World of Tanks is not included for the same reason max wasn't on Final Fantasy XV. Otherwise, here you go. 4K high detail. I tested two games with built-in benchmarks. F1 2017 is an older racing game. Yes, 2018 is out, but I don't have a copy of it, so 2017 it is. Nearly 120 frames per second at 4K high detail. Forza Horizon 4, which is stunningly beautiful, averaged 66 frames per second on both machines at 4K high detail. How awesome is that? The minimums weren't much lower, but these are driving games and the benchmarks are fairly consistent, so just a bit down from the average. Likewise, same thing with the maximum frame rates, just a bit more than the average. These are very consistent performers. This brings us to game group four, back to 1080p high detail. These were live gameplay benchmarks, not built-in benchmarks. Notice Ghost Recon Wildlands is repeated here. That's because I both live played it and did the built-in benchmarks. Same with The Division 2. This is excellent performance. This is also why I think these are the perfect 1080p AAA gaming cards for the next few years. Some people want to call them 1440p cards. They are, but not necessarily for AAA games. Take a look at Just Cause 4. That was recently released. 86 and 81 frames per second average. That is excellent for a game that frankly is not optimized very well, but Just Cause 5 when it comes out in three years probably isn't going to do that. 
On the other hand, The Division 2, which was also just released, performed spectacular, 109 and 106. However, that will dip in places. It is an open world game and it gets quite busy. And so while it will play at 1440p, it's a much better experience at 1080p. Anthem struggled the most, especially on the i5. Although in fairness, Anthem was tested much closer to launch several weeks ago. From when I'm recording this video, actually nearly a month has passed from when I first put all these together. So optimizations have occurred and perhaps a few months down the line, I'll retest that. Moving on to the 1% lows, note these are not minimums, this is the frame rate you'll get 1% of the time, or rather 99% of the time you'll at least get this frame rate or better. Notice that some of these dip below 60 frames per second. Having said that, all of these games were playable on both of these computers. This was a very infrequent drop to these numbers. Anthem, for example, 45 on the Intel, PUBG 40 on the Ryzen. Yes, they came down to those numbers, but both were very, very playable on those machines. So don't read too much into this. Overall, extremely respectable numbers. That leads us to the 0.1% lows. Now, they're not included for Ghost Recon Wildlands because they were like 2 and 3 respectively, and I think that looks terrible on the chart, and that's just that game. It always does that in live gameplay, so I left them off to make the chart look nicer. The rest of them, you can see here what the real 1% low numbers are. Yes, they're all below 60 frames a second except for two of them, but this is 99.9% .9 low, which is not really going to be hit very often. Game Group 5, 1440p, high detail, live gameplay. Take a look at those Battlefield 5 numbers, 79 and 85. That's at a high detail. That's really good. That is multiplayer conquest. That is the big multiplayer battles online, not single player. Fortnite and Overwatch, 144 frames per second at 1440p high. There you go. That's really, really nice. Sniper Elite 4 and The Division, equally impressive, well over 60 frames per second. 1% lows. What kind of performance can you expect 99% of the time? Even Fortnite, as demanding as it is at 1440p high, maintained over 60 frames per second 99% of the time, as did almost everything else. The Division and Battlefield 5 dipped just under that a bit. If you want those above there, get an RTX 2060 instead of a GTX 1660 Ti. Look at Overwatch. That's spectacular, but it's Overwatch. I think a lot of people would expect that it performs very, very well. And then Sniper Elite 4 stayed right around 60. Moving on to 0.1% lows, these can dip pretty far down. Take a look at those Fortnite numbers. That's pretty savage. If you're a serious competitive professional gamer, you're not going to like these numbers. But then again, you're not using $900 gaming PCs to play 1440p high detail, are you? For most people, these are just fine and it doesn't really matter. If it bothers you, run it at 1080p medium, change the resolution and detail settings, and of course, it'll improve a bit. Finally, Game Group 6. I said when I first reviewed both of these computers that these would play games at 4K, 60 plus frames per second, high detail or better, and there were a bunch of comments in the comment section beneath those videos saying I was off my rocker. Really? Sure about that? Okay, granted, these aren't the latest AAA games in the world, but Doom and Grand Theft Auto V are in there. Overwatch, World of Warships, those are respectable 4K numbers. League of Legends was, of course, ridiculously fast. And CSGO is not overly demanding. But these are high detail, not low detail numbers. Even the 1% lows are very respectable. 99% of the time... Either of these computers will maintain between 46 and 50 frames per second 4K high detail in Grand Theft Auto V. Okay, Grand Theft Auto V didn't come out last week. I understand that. Overwatch, World of Warships, Doom. Take a look at these numbers. These are 1% lows. These are very, very respectable. Now, I don't really recommend $900 gaming PCs for 4K gaming, but it will do them depending upon what you want to play. For the sake of completeness, here's the 0.1% low numbers. They fall down pretty far, although even those GTA 5 numbers are still pretty good, 40 and 36 respectively. 
Well, that was an absolute ton of benchmark charts. Hopefully many of you are still here. You enjoyed the video. You found that interesting, informative, useful. It's a lot of numbers to go through. There's a lot of charts there and a lot of detail. Before we finish this video out, I want to share with you a couple of thoughts on reading benchmark charts. I really should do a behind the scenes, how benchmarking works and how to read benchmark charts in detail. But for now, I want to leave you with a simple thought. When you look at averages in benchmark charts, keep something in mind it is only recording the average of whatever was benchmarked. For built-in benchmarks, it's a fairly small piece of the game that may or may not be representative of the entire game or the hard parts of the game. There are some games that are well known for having very difficult sections, Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Each of those games are known to have sections that are much, much harder than others and the frame rate drops. Even in the games where I did live testing, I am in fact only testing it in one spot of the game. Some of the live gameplay benchmarks were 10 minutes long, some were longer, but I'm only testing in one part of the game or doing one thing. So it is not necessarily reflective of all of the parts of the game. The simple reason I say all that is if you look at the charts and you see a game get 65 frames per second average, you can expect to get 85 in some areas and 45 in others. Are you okay with those dips? Are you okay with that range of highs and lows? Maybe you are and maybe you're not. But if you want to maintain 60 frames per second most of the time, yes, the, the minimums and the 1% lows are in the chart to help you. But again, I'm only testing in part of the game. You cannot look at those 1% lows even in the live gameplay and say, well, if it's at least 60 frames per second and the 1% low, then it'll be perfect all the time. It doesn't work that way more likely you are going to get lows below that depending upon your own system configuration and where you're playing in games and of course if you change any detail settings my general advice if you genuinely want to maintain at least 60 frames per second throughout an entire game and games like shadow of the tomb raider witcher 3 ghost recon wildlands is a good example of this uh, the division if you want to maintain that you want to look for a system configuration or a graphics card or graphic detail settings that average you at least 80 frames per second. 100 would be ideal, but 80 is a fairly safe number to have 60 most of the time. More is better, but just getting 60 in an average in a benchmark chart does not mean it's actually gonna be 60. You may very well see 40s a lot of the time. Are you okay with that? That's a personal decision, but I want you to keep that point in mind when you're reading charts. Last thought, Ryzen 5 2600X. I am recording this in April of 2019. Zen 2 is two months away. It's coming in June, or at least that's when we all expect it to be coming. I'm sure one of the comments that people are going to make down in the comment section below is, why would you buy a second gen Ryzen now when third gen Ryzen is coming so soon? Maybe you shouldn't. If you're not in the market for a computer today, if you could wait a few months, if your current computer is doing the job, well, frankly, if your current, current computer is doing the job, why would you buy a new one anyway? But putting that issue aside, yeah, sure, wait a couple of months. You'll get more for the same money. Unless, of course, you find a second gen Ryzen on a deal, especially as the prices drop. The same thing happened with first gen when second gen came out, the prices dropped. And for a long, long time, the first gen chips were actually the better buy. There's also the consideration that as everybody's upgrading to Zen 2, otherwise known as Ryzen third gen, these might start to end up on the used market and you might very well pick up one for a very good price. If you find one on a deal, that's always worth considering. For more of my detailed thoughts on these two builds, check out the playlist down in the video description below. There are multiple videos on both machines where I go into excruciating detail. I've already talked about them enough here. Hopefully you guys love this. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly down below. Hit the bell notification icon next to it to actually be notified when new videos come out because frankly YouTube won't tell you otherwise. Hit the join button that's next to it to become a member of the Deal Nation. Support the channel, get exclusive access to Tech Deals emojis for the comment section below as well as a special badge during live chats and access, access to the Tech Deals Discord. We have 12 private channels on the Tech Deals Discord for chatting. Link to that down in the bottom of the video description below. Thank you all so much for being here. I will see you next time.